I think the statistics around diabetes in the South Asian community are awful. We're talking about Bangladesh, India, uh, Pakistan. There are probably about 200 million people with diabetes uh, in these countries, uh, if not more. There is simply a doubling or tripling of the rate of diabetes at the age of 40 and 50 in people from the South Asian community. And there are many reasons for this. Another exciting piece of research coming from um, Professor Gill's group um, in Scotland is that the fact that fitness is so very important to improving insulin resistance. So it's been shown that the South Asian, possibly because of the reduced muscle mass, is as fit as somebody who is white Caucasian, but a full five BMI units bigger. So what I'm saying is that a South Asian with a body mass index of 25 has the same level of fitness on average as a white Caucasian with a body mass index of more than 30. So we have to concentrate as a community on improving muscle mass and our physical fitness. And we need to think about general aspects of improving physical activity, such as just walking that little bit more, getting out and about, and that brisk walking will be the easiest. And obviously, if you were to pursue uh, physical activity such as badminton or uh, jogging or going to the gym, then that can be of even greater benefit. benefit. But for those, those of us who want to do the minimum, as it were, brisk walking, 20 to 30 minutes, five times a week, is probably going to be enough. I think one of the biggest barriers I have with my South Asian patients is the reluctance to go on to yet another tablet or to go on to insulin or another form of injection. Now, let, let's make it very, very clear that clinicians, healthcare professionals working in the field of diabetes are there to prevent a lot of the illnesses that you may see in the future. So unfortunately, you may need two or three tablets for blood pressure. You may need two or three tablets to lower your cholesterol. And you may need three, four, and possibly an injection as well to get your diabetes control right. We have a group of drugs now called the SGLT2 inhibitors, and that essentially means any drug that ends in glee flows in. They reduce heart attacks, they reduce heart failure, and they also reduce uh, kidney disease. So it's far better to take these tablets as early as a healthcare professional advises not to have the problems in the future. And I would certainly hope that most people with diabetes are on cholesterol lowering agents because we have very good evidence that they reduce heart attacks and strokes by at least 25%. And who would want to have a heart attack or stroke if it can be prevented? So a lot of advice does come across, but some of the interesting advice is just around healthy living. So people are advising physical activity, yoga, a balanced diet. Some of the medications I am less keen on because some of these medications are traditional medicines and they do work. But the problem with traditional medicines is we don't know how much of the active ingredient is in them. But the modern agents that we have for managing diabetes, we know will reduce the risk of you having kidney disease or heart failure or heart attack. So I think we do have to stick to tried and tested drugs for diabetes, but use the traditional lifestyle of being physically active a varied diet uh, as the cornerstone of the way that diabetes is managed in the South Asian community. There have been several ideas on how we should look for diabetes in the South Asian community. Well, I would argue that we don't need to look. I would argue that all patients in the South Asian community are at high risk, and indeed, the vast majority of our general UK population. So we must mitigate against the factors that result in that march towards diabetes. Improving physical activity, optimizing body weight, and having the right balance of nutrients in our diet. Good hydration, fruits and vegetables, the right amount of protein, the small amount of fat, and if you're overweight, halving those carbohydrates. And I think that would do more than enough to start the process towards reducing the prevalence of diabetes in the South Asian community. So when it comes to you working with your healthcare professionals, always ask them, why should I take this tablet? How will this tablet help me? How will this injection help me? 
What are the side effects? What benefit uh, would I expect? And you'd be absolutely surprised. Now, the care that people with diabetes receives has to be what's called culturally competent. That means if we as healthcare professionals want to look after a group of Pakistani patients, Bengali patients, or Indian patients, we must make sure that the adequate amount of health literacy is there. So we may need to communicate in the traditional South Asian uh, language, but the great news is that organizations such as Diabetes UK and the educational talks and videos that, and leaflets and even the websites, uh, have, they all have a lot of material in the South Asian languages and as such, it's making education very, very accessible.